San Juan de la Vega, or simply San Juan, it's a Mexican town in the municipality of Celaya in Guanajuato. It has a population of about 11,000 inhabitants. It's about the fourth most populated town in the municipality. This is not my first time here. 2019 was my first year to witness this incredible festival. Since then, it's been a tradition to come back and visit my friends and celebrate this festival. All right, we are here in San Juan de la Vega for the Exploding Hammer Festival. And as always, here with my buddy, Natha from Celaya, a nearby town. So what's gonna go on here? Well, basically, we start the festival here uh, later 1 p.m., 2 p.m. The saint is gonna be here in this house for the celebration. Behind us, actually, it's a scenario. The street is gonna be the whole town for the dances, for the party. Uh, the saint was a uh, was a, like a citizen from the town. He was like rich and he was assaulted for the uh, for the bad people here. He have some prayers for the saint, uh, San Juan, San, uh, San Juan Bautista is the saint. So he have some prayers and San Juan Bautista help help him to the, to save the money. So basically, this is why the 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 party here, the, the festival. Actually, it's a carnival. The whole day, it's like playing some like uh, cops and thieves, the, the the child game. They are all like representing the story behind this uh, thing in the town. They have some coins uh, made them with chocolate. Those coins are the, like the story say, uh, the gold that was stolen from San Juan, the, uh, the guy who was living here, who was rich and who was assaulted. They take the, the coins and are giving to the people who are enjoying the festival. So we're leaving the town now, walking about 20 minutes to the fields where they're gonna do all the huge explosions. And this is the first time I've seen this sign where Celaya is actually kind of partnering with San Juan de la Vega or something. So they're kind of endorsing this festival now. They're still setting up in the town. So they're setting up the flowers and the stage for the music and everything. But yeah, I think most of the action you could hear behind me is in the field. So that's where we're going. The central celebration of the Patron consists of a very particular dynamic. The population, mainly men, gather in one of the banks of the municipality. Then they walk to an empty lot with different degrees of explosion. The walk from the downtown of the town to the exploding area is about 20 minutes. During the journey, small explosives are allowed. Remember, this is a celebration so little by little this becomes something similar to a carnival the people who make the explosions have been practicing this for years and even started when they were little feels like war zone at times if you ever decide to come i recommend you use earplugs all the time so we're walking from the town everyone starts walking from the church down the railroad tracks here and you can see there's people blowing up the explosions along the tracks even before they get to the field and we got the police here trying to stop people from doing it outside of the field, I think. You can see behind me, there's some explosives here on the tracks. And somebody was going to blow it up, but then the cops came by and he ran off. Yeah, lots, lots of mischief here. Kind of controlled mischief. Yeah, we're heading out to the field and that's where the big explosions are happening. So let's go. Right, so on the way, we ran into this big group and they're just doing the explosions right here by the railroad tracks and drinking. And the cops don't like it. <laughs> they keep coming by with their sirens. I think they're trying to get everybody to go to the main field. We're heading there. Eventually we get there, but there's a lot of stuff going on on the way. So always something going on here.
right, we are right in the middle of the action here and they're just going one after another. <laughs> and you gotta watch out because shrapnel is flying. Fernando already got hit a pebble in the face. That's why you gotta wear long sleeves, eye protection, and jeans. So it's a bunch of groups of friends and they'll wrap each other's uh, explosives up and it's kind of a competition who gets the biggest explosion. So, so far the biggest one I saw was the guy in white, in the white shirt. And yeah, that really, he was a big guy and that threw him off his feet and the, the hammer went flying. So you really gotta watch out, don't get too close. Oh, I felt that one. Yeah, it's, it's crazy here, but it's fun. They do it all day long, one day a year. Yeah, just so much going on. So we're gonna do this for a little longer and then head back to town and see what we could find and check out the other families. The explosives used in the celebration are made by hand by the inhabitants themselves. They only use two ingredients, chlorate and sulfur. The five kilos of chlorate, they put a half a kilo of sulfur. The explosive powder is emptied into a cylindrical paper casing. The chemical has to be compressed so that when it hits, it explodes. All right, so here we got the, all the powder wrapped up, and then they strap it onto the sledgehammer with, with packing tape. And yeah, they just try to get the biggest one possible for the best explosion. Oh, that one was big. <laughs> so yeah, pretty cool, but we got like a whole bag full here. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> yeah, look at that one. That's a bunch of little ones. So this is all the experiments. And they just strap it to the sledgehammer. So pretty cool. It's packed tight. And this is like really dense. So I could see why it explodes so much. Pretty cool. <laughs> So they have, they have it divided into two fields here for the adults and they have a little kid section over here in the field. So it keeps them separate. Oh and here's a, check this out, here's a little parade, you got the horses and they'll probably join up with the main parade later on today. So a lot of people are getting injured here this year. One little kid just had something on his lip and he was bleeding a bit. And then Fernando saw someone with their arm all bloody. So yeah, you gotta be careful. They keep trying to do bigger and bigger explosions. And if you don't hit it right and there's uh, rocks and stuff, it's gonna shoot back at you. So yeah, you gotta be careful, but injuries do happen. <laughs> So he just had a big injury. It was the guy that packed it that big and he hit it and just though, just from the force of the explosion, he couldn't breathe. Paramedics would not go get him. People had to carry him over there to get treatment. He's over there being treated. I think he's okay. But yeah, he was just disoriented and couldn't breathe from the shock wave. And I guess he's lucky that's all that happened, that no shrapnel hit him at that force, because that was one of the biggest ones we've seen. Oh, there he is. Oh. He still doesn't look all that great, but he's walking. So hopefully he uh, just snaps out of it soon. These guys have been doing it all their lives and sometimes their ego gets a little too big and they go for it too big. All right, we are walking back to town. It's pretty far. It's kind of warm and my feet are so tired. Oh, and there's still explosions going on. One thing, there's no restrooms anywhere. And I gotta pee really bad. This was a highlight, the field and all the explosions, but now we're gonna go see all the really, really local experiences in the town. So, oh damn. <laughs> all right, let's go. All right, so we are walking back down the railroad tracks and there's a bunch of houses and they have all kinds of food and drink. So here, uh, where are you from? I'm from from here, from San Juan de la Vega. This is my original town. I live in Chicago right now, but every year I celebrate 
uh, the festival from the from the town. Nice. Okay. And then what do you have here? Yeah, it, this is like a juice, but it's not. Uh, it's it's came from the cactus, but they combine with a little wine and a little alcohol. To, you give it to the the saint to say thank you because every year they provide to you uh, something for you. And special, whatever you you give you thank you to him, he he help it to you. So there's a bunch of places giving out free food, and as the guy that we just talked to giving the poke away said, it's a tradition that they give back to the community for the saint. And here they have some mole with some tortillas. Everyone's lining up, and yeah, they just got a bunch of different places giving away a bunch of different things. So yeah, we can still hear the explosions going on over in the uh, railroad track. Pretty cool. So we're gonna, I don't know what we're gonna do. I gotta pee so bad, so. <laughs> All right, so we are right in the middle of the parade. It's chaos. We don't know which way to go. There's people going this way. It's a parade going this way. Yeah, it makes no sense, but it's crazy. We lost our friends. I don't know what we're gonna do. Just try to find a clear space to stand. Ah, here's, here's the saint. Everybody's carrying these little saints and they're all going towards that one house that they were decorating earlier. That's a designated house for the saint. This is the main saint. Alright, so we got stuck in that parade. We went down this side street to get away from the crowd, but it was even crazier. They're giving away free food all along the street and there's just lines and lines of people. But I got a free Coke. <laughs> so, oh yeah, and I had a free Agua de Fresa as well. So yeah, all these houses, they're giving away free food. They do this every year. That's just to give back to the community and for their saint. So anywhere from pozole, some mole with chicken, I think there's some mole with pork and a lot of drinks. So really cool. I want to find the ice cream person. Let's get some free ice cream somewhere. So that is it for San Juan de la Vega and the Exploding Hammer Festival. Yeah, it was a crazy year, busier than ever, and so many cool explosions. Uh, we saw the parade, we got uh, some free drinks, and uh, Fernando had some food. But yeah, it's busier than ever, way more crowded than the other four years I've been here. So I think this is just getting more and more popular, and it's, oh, and it's so exhausting, but it's just such an amazing time. So highly recommend you come check it out. Check out the links below for my buddy Natha. He'll give you some tips on how to get here. Do check it out for yourself and make sure to like and subscribe and check out all my other videos about Mexico and my TikToks for food all around Mexico.